I'm David Toman, author of NootropicsExpert.com. Are nootropics addictive or not? If you are in recovery or an addict or none of the above, what I share in this video will help you decide if using nootropic supplements are right and safe for you. If you're in recovery, will nootropics take you down that slippery slope to using again? Are nootropics addictive? It would be a shame if you relapsed after years of not using drugs and alcohol, especially if your intention was simply to boost brain power and even repair some of the damage caused by those years of using. The thing is, the more messed up you are and the more unhappy you are with your life, feeling normal again can feel amazing. A recovering addict can feel guilty when things seem to be going too good, as often happens when trying nootropics for the first time. The good news is that it's possible to optimize cognition without paying some terrible price. In this video, I'll explain in detail why nootropics are not addictive and offer you some safe and effective alternatives to the popular smart drugs in use today. So what qualifies me to talk about addiction in nootropics? I've had the misfortune of having to live with and deal with addiction among people closest to me. They call the paramedics break down the door kind of addiction. That is a matter of life or death. Addiction scares me enough to give me pause with how I talk about nootropics. Being careful to weigh the pros and the cons of each nootropic supplement and provide fair warning when something could cause problems for some people. First, let's establish exactly what I mean by the word nootropics. A search for nootropics and addiction will turn up references on the first page of re for rehab centers, offering their services for recovery from addiction to nootropics and smart drugs, or so-called mental health authority sites who purposely or through sheer ignorance, either copy other websites or refuse to recognize the clinical evidence and establish differences between a nootropic and a smart drug. A true nootropic is defined in this video and throughout this channel, Nootropics Expert, is based on the original definition of a nootropic. This definition was established by the person who may, many consider the godfather of nootropics. Romanian psychologist and chemist, Dr. Corneliu Gheu synthesized paracetam in 1963, and he coined the term nootropic in 1972. Dr. Gheu gave us a list of five criteria that a substance must have to be considered a true nootropic. So a true nootropic enhances memory and the ability to learn, assist brain function under disruptive conditions such as a lack of oxygen and electroconvulsive shock, protects the brain from chemical and physical toxins like anticholinergic drugs and barbiturates, increases natural cognitive processes, and it must be non-toxic to humans. The problem is when you hear the term nootropic used, people loosely mean cognitive enhancer. A substance or compound that improves memory, increases cognitive processing speed, boosts alertness, concentration, or focus, or a combination of these qualities. Smart drugs may also meet part of the definition of cognitive enhancer. Prescription medications like Adderall and Ritalin, Vivance, Modafinil, and others. But these meds fail at least three of the criteria that Dr. Gurgeo established. The last on the list must be non-toxic to humans rules smart drugs out completely, as you should too if you're worried about or dealing with addiction and recovery. In pharmacology, tolerance describes the decrease of loss of effectiveness or response to a drug or a nootropic, typically due to a recent or prolonged exposure to that substance. Tolerance also includes the need for increasing the dose or number of doses of a drug or nootropic over, the over time to maintain the same effect. But tolerance is not addiction by definition. Cycling is often used by neurohackers and biohackers to counteract tolerance. 
And an example of cycling is using a nootropic for five days, taking a two-day break from using it, and then resuming use for another five days before your next two-day break. Not cycling to avoid tolerance or simply increasing the size of the dose or number of doses is just ignorance. Or lack of maturity and not addiction. Yes, it could be and often is dangerous, but it's not addiction. Now we enter a rather gray area of the definition of addiction and nootropics. It is unfair by any stretch to call it addiction if you have learning disabilities or are dealing with age-related cognitive decline, and you find yourself doing better than you have for a long time thanks to nootropics. You feel you can't live your best without nootropics. You insist you need nootropics. Now, this is not addiction in my opinion, and some psychologists agree with my assessment. Dr. Addy Jaffe, in a statement, in an article in Psychology Today, stated, there's no such thing as a purely psychological addiction. I find that those who bring it up or insist that someone is addicted to using a particular nootropic supplement often comes from an addict or recovering addict or someone in the business of making money off of addicts. But before you label me as naive, there is admittedly an overlap between brain regions involved in processing natural rewards and drug abuse. Behavioral addictions have become increasingly documented in clinical settings. Here, we're talking about compulsive activities such as eating, exercising, sex, shopping, and gambling. And like drug or alcohol addiction, non-drug addiction symptoms include craving, impaired control over behavior, tolerance, withdrawal, and high rates of relapse. However, very few nootropics reviewed here on Nootropics Expert result in an immediate type of highly noticeable benefit. Nothing will give you the kind of reward you get from using alcohol, cocaine, meth, or other popular recreational drug. It's highly unlikely that you'll lose the house or your job by using a nootropic, even at higher than recommended doses. There isn't that strong, uncontrollable desire to get your next fix. If you stick with using nootropics, you may end up with a bigger house or a better job. But using higher than recommended doses or combining nootropics with certain prescription meds could be dangerous and even life-threatening in some instances. So please carefully listen to the side effects section for each one of my videos and carefully read through every review on the Nootropics Expert website before trying something new. So what happens when you stop using one of these cognitive enhancers we call nootropics? Recall our definition of what qualifies as a nootropic. These supplements are overall considered non-toxic and very safe. They do not sport any addictive qualities. And some even offer long-term benefits to your brain after you discontinue use. Very, very few nootropic supplements resolve in physical withdrawal symptoms from discontinuing their use. Actually, the only ones that come to mind right now are Phenobit, and a very, very few people report that salbutamine may be addictive. You may know of some others, but there's very few of them. Some worry that stopping use of a nootropic could result in a decline in cognitive ability and that you'll feel dumber when you stop taking your nootropic stack. Experienced neurohackers will verify that stopping the use of nootropics means your brain may return to your baseline. So if you were dealing with brain fog, slow thinking, depression, or anxiety before you started using nootropics, your new normal will make going back to living without nootropics an unpleasant experience. But the human brain is very adaptable. You'll quickly become accustomed to living with less than stellar cognitive abilities. And life will go on. In the nootropics versus smart drugs section, I mentioned earlier, I pointed out my disdain for those who insist on using the terms nootropics and smart drugs interchangeably. Now, ad admittedly, this may display a lack of maturity on my part, but the stark difference between these two categories of cognitive enhancers is especially critical to the recovering addict. 
Nootropics are defined as natural or synthetic compounds that enhance learning and memory, assist brain function under conditions of disruption, protect the brain from chemicals and toxins, increase cognitive processes, and are non-toxic. Smart drugs are medications prescribed to treat ADHD, narcolepsy, and dementia. The problem for the recovering addict is using any of these drugs off-label for cognitive enhancement. Now, the smart drugs I'm referring to include Adderall, Concerta, Donazepil, Focalin, Modafinil, and Ritalin, among others. These drugs have become increasingly popular with students and some executives to increase concentration, focus, learning, and memory. The problem for addicts is the high addictive potential from using these drugs. In fact, the addictive potential is so high that the United States DEA classifies these drugs in the same category as cocaine and meth. If you are a sober addict or realize you have a substance abuse problem, you cannot touch any medication that creates euphoria or has any kind of abuse potential. The narcolepsy drug modafinil may be the only exception to this rule. A review of the most recent modafinil studies suggests that it has positive effects in healthy people, including enhancing attention, improving learning and memory, and increasing, increasing fluid intelligence with minimal effects on mood. The report went on to say that modafinil appeared to be safe to take in the short term with, no, with few side effects and no addictive qualities. But researchers at Harvard and Oxford universities admit that they have not examined modafinil's use over the long term. Is the use of modafinil where you draw the line if you're in recovery? It seems to me from someone who has witnessed addiction firsthand that you're getting into a gray area. And it would be a shame to be taking something that you'll end up feeling guilty about. Now, we have much safer alternatives to any smart drug with nootropics. For example, many neurohackers report that for scolin and artichoke extract improves mood. This combo motivates you to want to learn and to get things done. Some say it works as good as modafinil. Nootropics have been proven over the last few decades to be something that you do not need to feel guilty about using for cognitive enhancement. So if you're in recovery, you can feel confident that using nootropics are okay. Now here are some suggested non-addictive alternatives to smart drugs. Macuna purians, which contains L-DOPA. Macuna works as an antioxidant and heavy metal chelator. It improves memory and cognition. It reduces depression and boosts libido. L-DOPA is also the precursor to dopamine. Now, the suggested dosage for Macuna Pyrians is 250 to 500 milligrams per day. Anacetyl-L-cysteine, or NAC, is the N-acetyl form of the naturally occurring amino acid L-cysteine. NAC regulates the amount of glutamine in your, glutamate in your brain. Glutamate is a neurotransmitter that is responsible for sending signals between neurons in the brain. This plays an important role in learning and forming memories. Neurohackers report that using NAC reduces brain fog. It improves memory, attention, and concentration. It reduces anxiety and depression and irritability and boosts energy levels. The ideal study nootropic and is a great non-addictive alternative to smart drugs. Recommended dosage for NAC is 500 milligrams three times a day. L-tyrosine. L-tyrosine is an amino acid that is a necessary precursor for the synthesis of dopamine, norepinephrine, and epinephrine. As your dopamine levels increase, you're better able to concentrate, organize your thoughts, and stay productive. In one study with 85 young people aged 4 to 18 years, researchers using L-tyrosine and 5-HTP as the precursors for dopamine and, and um, serotonin. They found that these precursors yielded similar results to Stratera and Ritalin, and the amino acid protocol may be equal in efficacy to potent pharmaceutical ADHD medications. Phosphatidylserine. Phosphatidylserine is a phospholipid component of the membrane encasing every one of your brain cells. It maintains the fluidity and permeability of brain cells, allowing for the efficient transfer of proteins, enzymes, nutrients, oxygen, and glucose into and out of each cell. 
Researchers in Japan conducted a randomized double-blind placebo-controlled trial with 36 ADHD children aged 4 to 14 years. The kids received 200 milligrams of phosphatidylserine or a placebo daily for two months. The team recorded the children's ADHD symptoms, short-term and working memory, and mental performance. The researchers found that phosphatidylserine significantly improved ADHD symptoms in short-term memory. ADHD symptoms that were reduced included inattention, short-term memory problems, and impulsivity. The placebo group saw no improvement during the trial. Now that's just a small list of non-addictive alternatives to smart drugs, and it's just a small sample of what's possible with nootropics. So spend some time over on the Nootropics Expert website and search for ADHD or Ritalin, Adderall, or Modafinil. Or do the same search here on my channel on YouTube, and you'll have access to literally dozens of safe nootropic alternatives for enhanced cognition. The unauthorized or off-label use of prescription ADHD medications like Adderall and Ritalin and the narcolepsy drug modafinil is common among high school and university students. Nearly 20% of Ivy League college students reported using prescription stimulants while studying. But the use of smart drugs does not stop at graduation. It's often unspoken but common knowledge that bankers, doctors, lawyers, and other professionals, and even the world's military personnel are using smart drugs to stay competitive and perform better on the job. I do not believe that this trend is going to decrease anytime soon, which is one of the reasons why I'm on a mission to spread the knowledge of nootropics as a safe alternative to smart drugs. As are many of my colleagues through blog posts, and through threads on Reddit and Longesity. You do not have to risk something to enhance cognition that you'll feel guilty about. And if you're in recovery or you feel you have a problem with addiction, it would be a shame if you relapsed, regardless of your good intentions. Nootropics are a safe and proven alternative to every smart drug on the market, so choose wisely. So there you have it, my take based on personal experience and the science on the non-addictive qualities of nootropic supplements. If you want to read the full transcript for this video, you'll find a link to it below this video. It's the link that's called Are Nootropics Addictive? That link will take you to my website where you'll find the transcript for this video. And while you're there, you'll also find dozens and dozens of articles on all the most popular nootropics on Nootropics Expert. If you have any questions or you want to share your experience on addiction and your experience using nootropics, please use the comment section below this video or at the bottom of my article called Are Nootropics Addictive? over on Nootropics Expert. I do my best to respond to comments and questions as quickly as I can. If you haven't already, download your free copy of Secrets of the Optimized Brain. It's nearly 100 pages and contains details in 92 of the most popular nootropics used today. And consider getting a copy of my book, Head First, The Complete Guide to Healing and Optimizing Your Brain with Nootropic Supplements. Head First is nearly 600 pages and the best guide on the planet for fixing and optimizing your brain. Now, if you could use some personal help with choosing the right nootropics, or figuring out how to deal with your own brain health issues? You might want to book a personal consultation with me. You'll find a link to my calendar below this video. And if you want to see more videos and all the best nootropics used today, subscribe to this channel before you leave. I'll be putting up new videos on nootropics and optimizing your brain every week. I'm David Toman, author of Nootropics Expert.